Jacoby, what what does your imaginary friend look like? Yeah, like really long fingers. The scary movie screen. That's what his face looked like. He's got a long face and he's like made this real long looking creepy face. Well, out of nowhere, I see this glowing ball of energy. Well, at this point, I'm scared. TV starts to change channels. It was my grandmother. I saw these big old long fingers come around the the doorway, the trim of the door. I actually went and missed this, but I did not tell my husband what I saw because I didn't want him to think I was nuts. My paranormal experience. I am Katie from Pampa, Texas, and I would like to share my paranormal experience that has happened to me and my family. Whenever my son was five, five and a half, he had an imaginary friend. He was always in his room talking with, talking with somebody. So we was always thinking, oh, an imaginary friend, kids have an imaginary friend. So we would just listen, go check on him every once in a while. And he would just start, you know, whisper an imaginary friend. So we would ask him, what's your imaginary friend's name? I don't remember what his name was, but he told us the name Charlie or something like that. A couple of days went by, still kept on doing it. Jacoby, what, what does your imaginary friend look like? Well, he's bald headed and his mouth, he says he's got a long face and he's like, made this real long looking creepy face. And we was like, okay. A couple more days went by and we was like, Jacoby, you know, your imaginary friend, you know, has, what does he look like? He's still talking to him and he's like, yeah, but he would talk like if he was right there with him or whatever and he'd have extra food in his room or whatever and he's like, and his finger, his hands are real big and we was like, well, well what does he look like? And he's like, and he's just real tall and so, we was thinking, well, maybe he's a friend, just imaginary friend or whatever. We moved, and then we moved to a house on Barnes, and me and my husband was sitting, watching TV, and I kept on seeing an image out the side of my face. So I kept on looking. I looked over there about three or four times and kept on seeing the same thing, and then I saw these big old long fingers come around the the doorway, the trim of the door, I actually went and missed this, but I did not tell my husband what I saw because I didn't want him to think I was nuts. So the way that our stairs was, they were steep and they were tall to where if you was to walk up them, you could see around it, but a tall person couldn't be on the ladder and be around it. So it had to been a pretty tall person to be way up there with their hands around it. And it was long, long fingers and just a face, a long face looking. My paranormal experience. A couple of days later, my husband kept on looking at the door and I was like, what do you, you know, what do you, what is it? And he was like, nothing. And I was like, no, what is it? He said, I said, because, you know, I saw something the other day, you know, what is it? And he described the exact same thing what I saw. And after we started talking about it, it started sounding more and more like what my son had described what he was seeing whenever he was little. At that time, my son wasn't talking about the man or whatever it was anymore, but he started having night tremors where he was shaking at night and sweaty and stuff. We was having to wake him up. He wouldn't wake up, but he would talk to us. He knew what we was talking to, to us, but it was like he was still in his dream. And he would just cry. We'd have to walk him around and stuff. Sometimes we'd stay in hotel rooms and we'd carry him around. He'd be shaking and crying. and he'd act like he was reaching inside the mirror grabbing stuff and saying weird stuff and um we'd take him outside and give him a bath and try and cool him off and take him outside and it took nearly 30 minutes or longer for him to come out of it but even after he came out of it he knew that it was a dream because he told us that he could hear us 
and see us, but it was like we were in a tunnel. Whenever all this was going on, when we would stay at home just to cover him, we would make a pallet in the living room or whatever, and he would be asleep. And sometimes he'd wake up shaking and stuff like that and figured he was having his little tremors. Maybe we can wake him up before something happened and he would start laughing. Well, Jacoby, what are you laughing about? And he was like, that man. And I was like, that man where? And he was like, that man right there, he's dropping food all over the end of my blanket. And we was like, oh, well, you know, okay. And then he just went straight back to sleep after that. That was really traumatizing to our family. And that's whenever he was five and six and he's 18 now. And we still talk about the story. So after hearing about this long fingered and creepy faced entity, I have decided to reach out to their son, Jacoby, and have him give his own description of what this entity or spirit looks like. I remember he had like really long fingers, like probably a foot long. And he, like the scream mask, the scary movie scream. Right. That's what his face looked like. But he was bald, he was really white. Um, he was really tall. I remember my parents would always say like, they would see him and stuff. I just always saw him as a friend, but they said that he was pretty scary. Hearing this information coming from Jacoby himself makes this story even more chilling and credible. If he's at home by himself, he sleeps in the living room. He doesn't like sleeping in his room if we're not here. He, he remembers it. It's not like something that happened to him whenever he was small and he forgot about it because he grew out of it. I think he built a wall there to ignore it, but I think he's traumatized by it because he still tells people about it. It was like whatever it was followed us from the Sumner house to the Barnes house because it was the exact same image. So I don't know if it stayed there and didn't come here with us or I don't know what happened to it or if it's still here and it knows we're content with it not scaring us. I don't, I don't know where it went. I haven't seen it anymore or heard of it anymore. My name is Nathan Withers, and I'm a paranormal investigator, as well as a documentary filmmaker. And this is my paranormal experience. My grandmother was a very godly person. She was also a photographer. She absolutely loved to get out her camera and just take pictures of life. You know, the ocean, the mountains, the trees, flowers, birds, you know, just God's creation. When I entered into the field of the paranormal, you know, I, I broke the news to her. You know, I pretty much told her that, hey, um, I just wanted to let you know that I am now doing paranormal investigations. And, you know, I, I really just wanted to know her thought on all that stuff, you know? Because she was very, very skeptical about the ghostly side of things. I knew that she believed in angels and demons, but I'm not sure that she believed in ghosts. Well, when I broke the news to her, you know, she kind of laughed it off and, you know, she said, oh, yeah, sure. I'm not sure about all that, <laughs> you know. Myself and my family returned to Pampa, Texas for a family gathering 
I don't exactly remember what the occasion was or what the celebration was, but you know, it was myself, my family, my cousins, my parents, you know, all of us just kind of kind of gathered around, you know, and had a had a get together. Well, you know, she had come up to me and pretty much just told me, "Hey, I want to let you know. I know that we we joke around about you being in the paranormal industry and you know, you're hunting ghosts and you know all that stuff, but she said, "I want to let you know that no matter what you do in life, I'm going to support you." And as she was kind of turning around to walk into the kitchen, she she kind of turns back to me and she goes, "You know what? I'll I'll make you a deal." She said, the day that I pass, I'm going to come back and show you myself in spirit form. And, you know, I kind of sat there and looked at her, you know, and me being at the age that I was at back then, you know, I thought nothing of it. And I pretty much just said, okay, cool, that sounds good, you know. <laughs> you know, I just, I laughed it off and... We went about our business and never thought nothing of it after that. My grandmother had been very sick. Old age had really hit her hard. Not on the outside, but on the inside. It had really taken its toll to her and done its damage. On February 28th, 2015, I received a phone call from my dad um, telling me that my my grandmother had passed away and for my dad to call me and give me news like that doesn't happen he never calls me unless it's an emergency and for him to give me a phone call like that is pretty serious so I leave work and I head to the hospital. I'm not gonna go into big detail about what I saw, but just know that when I got to the hospital, it wasn't a pretty sight, as you can imagine. And all I could remember was, I wasn't at closure with my grandmother at all. Matter of fact, the last conversation that me and her had together was about the ghost hunting stuff. When I was in the hospital and I was saying my last goodbyes to her, you know, it just ate at me that I wasn't at closure. I didn't get to say goodbye to her the way I wanted to, the way that a grandson should be able to say goodbye to his grandmother before she passes with good memories and that all was just building up. The depression was building up inside me because I didn't get to say goodbye to her. I remember going home that, that day and I don't know, for like a good week or so, all of that depression and all of that, that pain that I was feeling, it was just, it got worse and worse. And I told myself, I said, you know, there's no way your grandmother's gonna show, show herself to you. Just stop thinking about it. She's not gonna show herself to you. Although she said she, she was going to, she's not going to do it. She's a, not, she's a, a non-believer she is gone from this world. She's in a better place. She's not going anywhere. She's not going to come here. Until one night. My paranormal experience. I'm pretty much just laying down watching TV. And, you know, I'm just laying in bed. Not doing anything. I'm doing absolutely nothing when all of a sudden the TV starts to change channels. The TV that I had at the time was one of those old school TVs that had the VHS built into it. And it didn't have 
any of that voice activator speak out stuff like TVs now do, nowadays have. And you actually had to use the remote to change a channel. Well, the TV starts to change channels in out of nowhere. It goes straight to static. And then shortly after that, my door starts to creak open. And you know, I had those, I had that carpet that was really thick and really rough. And when you open the door, it was really hard to get, like you had to actually force it to open up. No, not this night. My door opened up like it was on, you know, like it was just as, like it was smooth. It opened up like it, like, it, like nothing was behind it or underneath it to keep it from, from budging. Well, after the TV goes to static, I begin hearing what sounds like high heels walking into my bedroom. And you gotta remember, my carpet is rough, thick, thick carpet. There's no way that anybody, any woman, is walking into my house or my room in high heels. The sound of these hills were very definitive. Well, at this point, I'm scared because I don't know what, what's going on. This doesn't happen in my house. I don't investigate my home. I've never had anything like this happen to me at my house. Well, out of nowhere, I see this glowing ball of energy. Not a ball of light, a ball of energy. There's a big difference. This ball of energy started real small, like pea size, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it, and it was the most beautiful color in the world. It was like a, a baby bluish type of color. And it hovered over, you know, and it hovered next to my bed for a good five minutes before I see this hologram of some of something start to like form from the ground and come up and uh, it looked like a projector screen like, like a hologram of a person was was showing up in my room well as I'm paying attention to this all fear is gone at this point I have no fear of what I'm looking at right now because I realize in that very moment who this spirit who this person was it was my grandmother my paranormal experience As she was manifesting right in front of my eyes, I see this absolutely beautiful woman, probably late 20s, mid 30s, um, dark brown hair, definitely from like a 50s or 60s era. Um, she had a a white dress on it wasn't a gown it was like a dress like she was like if she like if she was going on a date or something I don't know but all I know is she walked over to my bed and she put her hand out and she touched me she touched my arm and the crazy part is when spirits touch you it's it's usually cold to the feel this was very warm welcoming loving caring and I think most importantly she it was protecting very protecting and to this very day I'll never forget the message that she gave me 
I could not hear what she was telling me, but I could read her lips as clear as day. She told me, I told you that I would come back and visit you and show you myself in my prime. This is what I looked like. And you need to stop worrying about me, live your life, become a man, and do what you love. She said, I love you with all of my heart, and I am in a better place, and I'm where I'm supposed to be. She gave me a kiss on the forehead. She told me she loved me once more. She turned around, and just like that, she was gone.